Well, I think the, f the first thing worth mentioning is um, what we have um, is Mrs. Murphy, who's a publican, who's broadcast uh, live Premier League matches in her pub. Uh, but instead of using the authorised Sky feed through the subscription, she's decided to go uh, and buy uh, a decoder and decoder card from uh, the Greek, the Greek authorised uh, broadcaster uh, and then use that to the, as the feed in order for her regular goers to come and uh, watch games throughout the weekend. And so the argument has been is that, as you can imagine, there's sort of um, a number of players in this, uh, in this case. On one side, you have Mrs. Murphy who says, well, um, I'm still buying a legitimate subscription. It's just from another member state. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because I think that the Sky money, uh, the, the, the amount that Sky asked me to pay for my um, subscription in the UK is too expensive. Well, that's um, a similar case that was tied into the, to the Court of Justice decision um, a, um, an hour, almost a month or so ago. And more or less that was, um, was QC Leisure was the actual importer of the decoder and the decoder cards. So they were in effect the wholesalers that then sold the decoder and decoder cards to other publicans throughout the UK. It's a good question, because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not convinced myself sometimes about what, what actually happened or what has happened. But let me at least give you the, the procedural side of things first, and then we can go into a little bit more detail about the, the, the actual substantive nature of what was said. The procedural aspects were that, um, the, that Karen Murphy and QC Leisure, along with another case which wasn't referred at the same time, was re um, questions were referred by the English High Court um, to the European Courts. So in, in a lot of instances, when there are questions of European principle and European law, the English court can make what's called references to the, the Court of Justice. And what then happens is the Court of Justice will then go through its whole procedure of doing a type of oral hearing, getting evidence together, um, an advocate general will then make an opinion, and then after an advocate general opinion, there'll then be the Court of Justice will make its, uh, will answer the questions asked by the English court. And so in this case now, in the decision that came out um, uh, uh, last month, um, the, in, uh, the European Court answered the questions posed by the High Court, and there were a number of those questions. And to cut a, a, a relatively long judgment short, for, for the aspects of time anyway, the Court more or less said three things. The first thing it said was that um, the Premier League, in its contractual stipulations, couldn't prohibit the free movement of services and goods, more or less services, and those were the decoders and the decoder cards. So the, the free movement issues were, um, were uh, trumpeted and prompted by the courts of saying you cannot restrict the ability of a member state citizen to go to another member state in order to purchase um, a decoder and decoder card. The second aspect was a competition law issue, which was saying within the, within the Premier League contract as well, the Premier League tender specifically, the Premier League in order to maximise certain revenues in certain member states said that um, you could um, isolate certain territories. So for example in the UK um, the incumbent broadcasters are Sky and ESPN and they're the only ones, they're the authorised broadcasters in the UK. No, exactly. So they said in that instance that absolute territorial protection, i.e. the ability to segment markets, was contrary to EU law. But then what, in a way, muddies the waters to a degree um, is the third aspect, the third section of the judgment, which goes on to talk about specifically copyright law and the copyright directive. And unfortunately, I'm not the, the biggest, uh, I'm a competition lawyer and a free movement lawyer by trade, but I've tried to understand a little bit about the, the copyright elements because I think these, this is actually the crucial element um, of the case now. Um, in that. What the, what the court said was that because the Premier League held certain of its copyrights within the broadcast or had them, had the, the certain copyright elements, so for example the anthem, the logo, um, certain instant replays throughout the decision, uh, throughout the actual broadcast, that when Mrs. Murphy, for example, broadcasts her pictures that she's bought from Greece in the UK, she has to get authorization from the Premier League in order to use those copyrighted materials. And that, in effect, is where um, the, the issue is for a lot of people in this judgment. On one hand, you have very much the free movement, free movement of services and competition law arguments saying Mrs. Murphy should be able to go wherever she wants in order to get these broadcasts. 
but then on the same hand, same time, you have this quite protectionist protection of copyright principle, which the court seems to be suggesting that if Murphy wants to use these um, pictures, that she, requires, she needs further authorization from the Premier League. And as you can imagine, the Premier League <coughs> isn't, almost certainly isn't going to say yes. I think I think that's probably right. I mean, I think the, th the, the thing worth mentioning is twofold. Firstly, this is only this isn't the end of the case by any means. That the Court of Justice now has answered the questions. There's going to be a High Court hearing, which is going to be scheduled in for maybe in the next six months or so. There will then be further oral um, presentations given to the court, and then the court will come to its final decision based on the English law implications and the, the answers that the European Court has given. So the issue, I think, in that sense is um, it's not clear yet that um, the, what, it's not clear yet the, the outcome of the case, but it's also not clear yet whether the Premier League may have to then change the way that it tenders its rights, for example. I don't think it will. So, for example, from a, from a competition law perspective, um, if, a, if um, a clause is deemed anti-competitive, that clause is deemed void. Right. And so, theoretically anyway, the, the current contract has the potential to be declared null and void, or at least the potential clauses in that contract. And the reason why that's significant is, is if you can imagine if you're Sky or ESPN, and suddenly the territorial restriction that you enjoy the benefit of, because then you, you have the UK market to get subscribers from, suddenly is, uh, um, is null and void, then it's very unlikely you're going to want to pay, even for the last year of the deal, um, you know, the f f 500, just under five or just over four, yeah, just over 500 million pounds worth in order to, uh, to finalise the, the last year of the deal even. And there wouldn't be. And it wouldn't be at least on face value, but I'm positive, that, for example, that the Premier League has had contingency plans in for a number of months, if not years, bearing in mind when, when or how the decision will, will come out. We're nearing the end. We're nearing the end in a lot of ways, but I think maybe some people thought we would get much greater clarification on what the end result may be. Um, in the European Court um, answers rather than maybe the, the, the current limbo position that we have. And what, what it means is, at least on face value, that the High Court has some very, very interesting um, decisions, to be uh, decisions to make specifically on this copyright issue.